What especially angers me is that some of these self-proclaimed allies and advocates know there are people out there who are just waiting for another excuse to justify their hatred. In their recording of Jesus' journey to the cross, the author makes a point of saying that the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. Those leaders were looking for any excuse, valid or not, to crucify Jesus. This week, we witnessed yet another mass shooting, roughly the 130th this year, this time at a small private school in Nashville, Tennessee. And instead of focusing on ways this could have been prevented, such as gun control, a significant number of people have turned their attention toward the shooter's identity. Instead of focusing on the fact that the number one cause of child death in this country is now gunshot wounds, some, of, some folks have chosen to focus on eradicating trans people as a solution because they have been waiting, just waiting for an opportunity such as this. They have been waiting for a reason, any reason, to stoke their hatred. Today's gospel readings take us on a journey from Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on a donkey to his cruci crucifixion and death on a cross and burial. There's a lot packed into these readings, and they're quite long. But there is one paragraph I find particularly striking. It was a pretty long text, so I'll read the passage again for you. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large cloud with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Marginalized folks, those of us with the least amount of privilege and power, they need those who have more privilege and power than they do to physically place their bodies between them and the people, powers, and institutions that are literally killing them. Yet so often they are betrayed with a kiss, right? Self-proclaimed allies and advocates will say the right things, maybe give a little money here and there, maybe, maybe show up to a protest or two, but then when push comes to shove suddenly, their hands are tied and they can't do anything. The disciples were afraid to even be associated with Jesus lest they suffer the same fate lest their bodies be put at risk. I have observed that it is often the people with the most power and privilege who desert those they are called to defend when those people start getting harassed, beaten, arrested, targeted, because while many of them know they won't suffer the same fate, they do know that being associated with marginalized people puts their reputation at stake. And what, it is, what is it about this 
reputation that makes it so precious. What point does it prove to keep a reputation to save face at the expense of other people's lives? Is being liked really that important? What especially angers me is that some of these self-proclaimed allies and advocates know there are people out there who are just waiting for another excuse to justify their hatred. In their recording of Jesus' journey to the cross, the author makes a point of saying that the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. Those leaders were looking for any excuse, valid or not, to crucify Jesus. And they found that reason. And that reason was solidified when the crowd shouted to release Barabbas. They had their final excuse. They would kill the one whose reputation as a teacher and healer and whose mission of love and dignity was so very threatening to their own reputation that they needed to kill him in order to preserve their good image. It's baffling to me that someone's existence can be so threatening that people decide they need to be controlled, that they need to have laws made against them, or even worse, that the people that they find to be so threatening should die. There are a significant number of people who have deemed that the fact that the Nashville shooter happened to be a trans person, so it's been reported, is just the excuse they need to call for the eradication of trans folks. Rather than focusing on the fact that we have a serious gun violence problem that continues to go unaddressed, rather than focusing on the fact that six people, six more people are dead, rather than focusing on the fact that those staff and children should have been safe in that school, or focusing on the fact that children do not feel safe in their own schools, rather than focusing on any of this, they have decided they need to cause more harm. This isn't a new phenomenon. It's been happening. It's been happening in this country for many, many years, and in other places as well. The Holocaust, the Japanese internment camps of the 1940s, segregation, forcibly sending indigenous children to residential schools, migrants being held in cages, the list goes on. And it didn't have to happen this way. Jesus did not die for this. Jesus did not die so that violence could be perpetuated in God's name. Jesus did not die for access to guns. God incarnate did not die on that cross so that people could value money, power, and the preservation of their own image over the bodies and lives of people. Actually, I'm pretty sure that's what Jesus died to free us from. So why are we still not free? 